Today I'm going to try to do a quick um, review and walkthrough of this book, The Middle Ages, Renaissance and Reformation. This is a history book for grades 1 through 12. And this is the, um, the Teacher's Guide, the Family Study Handbook. You can, buy, you can find this at simplycharlottemason.com. Um, I will have a link in the description box below where you can find this. Okay, but what this is, um, this is actually our history for this school year, and this whole book is for one school year. Um, but they have six time periods. Um, the time periods go from ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, the Middle Ages, and that makes four. Then they have two more. Um, there's like a modern history and then maybe a pre-modern history. I don't know. But anyway, there's two more you know, current times. Both of my girls are in the same um, place in this book. Um, let me show you real quick if I can. To try to do this one-handed might be a little difficult. Um, but these history books are broken down, you know, because it's for grades 1 through 12, okay? So they have, and it's, you learn history through living books, Okay, you basically just read and narrate or do a written narration. Um, and a narration is just whenever, after you read out loud, the child narrates it back to you, which is they just verbally tell you, you know, a summary of what they heard and what they learned. But they have it broken down into like, you know, uh, certain grades grouped together. So there's grades 1 through 3, 4 through 6, 7 through 9, and then 10 through 12. Okay. Um, I have both of my girls in the four through six um, grade group for this year. The reason I do is I actually have a fourth grader and a seventh grader. Um, the reason I have them together, though, is because this is our first year using um, this type of history, and I did not want to have to buy, you know, all of these books because I did not know how it would go or if we'd be able to keep up with it. So I just wanted to you know, put them in one so we could have the same books and kind of see how that goes. Um, so we started this in August 2017. It is currently March 2018, and this is still our favorite homeschool curriculum. Uh, for history, I mean, sorry. Our favorite history curriculum we've ever done. Okay, so real quickly, what everything that you see on the table here is what's required for this, but only for the fourth through sixth grade group. Okay, so if you're doing first through third or seventh through ninth or tenth through twelfth, you will have different books. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so um, these two books here are actually, um, it's not the textbook, but I guess you could kind of call it the textbook. It's the core, it's the spine, you know, the backbone. Um, so these two books last the whole year, and you just read like one chapter a day, but whenever you um, study, a person like there's been twice already um, the first one it happened was when whenever we read um, out of this book we learned about Johann Gutenberg and after we read his chapter out of that book then we had to read this book ink on his fingers and it's actually a story about Johann Gutenberg himself so we read a chapter a day out of here which means we did not read any more out of here until this book was finished and then we moved on to a new person um, and now the second person we're doing to where it's kind of put us on pause with this book is we're learning about Erasmus. So after we read the chapter on Erasmus in this book, Famous Men of the Renaissance and Reformation, now we are reading The Man Who Laid the Egg, and this is a book about Erasmus. Okay? All right, this is the geography section. Um, we are finished with this book. Um, but this is actually the backbone of the geography. It's just a book that has a bunch of, um, every chapter is on a different, you know, explorer. And this is around the world in 100 years. Um, to do this geography, you will also need Uncle Josh's outline map collection. And I have one printed out here. That you can see what it looks like. This is one over Europe. And you'll also need a map, a world map. Okay, so this is like the core, um, you know, the backbone, the actual, you know, history part. This is the geography, 
And this stack is the actual living books, um, the story books that you read. And this is your guide, your handbook that tells you what to do each day. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so let's get looking into this. Okay, so this curriculum, it covers history, geography, and the Bible. <clears throat> It is copyrighted 2010 by Sonia Schaefer. <clears throat> Here's the table of contents, and you can pause the video if you need to. Um, it goes in a Charlotte Mason method because Charlotte Mason done a lot of living books. Um, okay, so this is broken down into three terms. However, we ourselves, we don't do school three terms. We do four quarters. So um, it has not been a problem for me to make this work for four quarters, <clears throat> just to let you know that. Okay, so, you know, it, it tells you what lesson. It tells you if it's going to be a history lesson and who the person you're going to be learning about is, and then, of course, the page number. And then, once again, it tells you if it's a history lesson, the person, and then... Um, geography and Bible, they are done the same day. They're done together. So you will do on a five-day week, you will have two, you will have four history lessons and then one geography and Bible lesson each week. Okay, so four history lessons a week and then one geography and Bible lesson each week as well. So you can pause it if you need to so you can see the people and events that are covered. And the first, um, for geography, the first part of the world that it covers is Europe. And see, we're getting into some very famous artists. And we are... Um, at the end of each term, you saw over here was term two, at the end of each term there will be, um, well this one here has five, there will be the last five lessons will be, you know, a catch-up or exam, a project or exam, or just an exam. So that was term one, then term two also has five exams. Here's term three. And then term three has five exams as well. Okay, so this book does a very good job about telling you, you know, how to use the book. This here just gives you the introduction. And like I said, you can pause the video if you want to read this. Okay, so how to use the book. All right, it says here that um, each term should take about 12 weeks. Um, each week is divided into four days of history and then one day of geography and Bible. And like I said, we are just, we don't do the three term division. We just do four quarters and we haven't had an issue using it like this. Okay, so you can see during the first term they learn about the Middle Ages and then they, they learn about early maps through Christopher Columbus. And then these are the two books of the Bible that they work on. Term two is about the Renaissance. And they continue Christopher Columbus and go all the way through Vasco da Gama. And then the Bible is 1st and 2nd Thessalonians and 1st Corinthians. Term three, they learn about the Reformation. And they go um, for geography. It's Cabral through Magellan. And then they finish 1st first, first Corinthians and 2nd Corinthians. Okay, and it gives assignments here, resources needed, and it tells you about the map drill. And then this part here just tells you about Charlotte Mason's methods, you know, how to use the living books, Bible reading, narration, book of centuries, which that's just basically a timeline. And it continues there. And then the resources needed. Um, so this is where it actually tells you all the things that you need. And, you know, so the famous men of the Middle Ages, famous men of the 
Renaissance and Reformation. You can see I have both of those. Um, and then the reading books out loud that all grade levels need. Castle and Cathedral, Ink on His Fingers, um, some of these here. And then the geography part, where is it at? Right there, Around the World in 100 Years, Christopher Columbus, and then the maps, and then a labeled world map. And then additional reading are grades for grades one through three. This is the book list that, that those grades need. And the book list that grades four through six needs. And seven through nine. And this is, would be the independent reading that they would do on their own. However, I'm actually reading these aloud just because I want to learn with them. And these are optional resources and then other materials you may need. All right, and then they, once again, they break it down into terms with the resources that you would need for each term. And they do that on all three terms. And the dividing line here on the side is they will have, see like here's one, the dividing line. It tells you like what time figure you would need for your book of centuries timeline. And this curriculum does not come with the timeline. And this just kind of has it broken down as to what to do, you know, each day of the week. Um, you know, like here's week one. As a family, you do this. And as a family, you do this for history. And then you find their grade level. And this is the book, the part that the kids read during the first week. And this is what you do for geography that first week. Week two, as a family, you read James chapter two. You read chapters 5 through 8 of history, and then depending on what grade group they are in, like mine are in 4 through 6, they would have read chapter 1 of the Vikings, and this is what they do for geography, and so on. And the lessons are very short. You can see here, um, each lesson tells you what is needed, and this... Um, not think what those things are called. Those sand, sand timers. I think they used to be called like egg timers. You know where you flip it over and they have sand on them. Um, that is the symbol for history. And so they tell you what you need for each lesson each day. And then, as a family, this is what you do together. And they give tips. You know, just a helpful things to do. And then the different grade groups. You know, you just pick out what grade group you have, and then your child, you know, you assign that part to your child. Here's lesson two. Lesson two continued. Here's lesson three. Lesson three is a geography and a Bible day. And so this is what that symbol means, the globe and the Bible. So you do Bible and geography on the same day. And so on this day, you would actually read... The assignment out of this book and you would do an outline the child would take this map because that's what it says up there Europe the child would take this map label what they already know and then look at the the labeled world map and pick out two new countries and label that and then they would do it again the following week so you do this once a week and over time the child is supposed to you know know the countries. Um, we did not find that good enough for us because the previous school year we started doing this, but my children would do this every day and they done very well. I mean, it was only like, what, three minutes, five minutes at the most. Um, it done, we done very well with that last year, but doing it once a week, they tend to forget the new ones that they learned the last week. So you don't really make much progress. So, um, so we kind of, we do this more often than just once a week. Um, and the Bible, we did not really care for the Bible. I thought it was just a little bit too much, and it made the Bible more of a dread, a dreading thing to do instead of you know something you look forward and desiring to do. So we quit doing what they recommend for the Bible, and we just read the Bible on our own. So we only use this for history. And we are absolutely loving it for history. Like I said in the beginning, 
this is our favorite history curriculum and the school year's almost over and my kids still say that this is the favorite history curriculum they've ever had and it's still they still say it's their favorite subject um, this school year so okay so I just wanted to basically just show you what this book looks like and kinda how it's laid out um, so I hope that this video was helpful and you know I'm not going to show you all these books because you know it just depends what grade level your child is in as to what books you will actually be required to get but the reason I did lay them out was just so you could see that you will have books <laughs> um, okay but you can see that each lesson is laid out you know the same it's so short it's it's so easy to do um, I I recommend this um, let me show you something though you might be wondering let me find hang on okay sometimes they will have okay for like grade levels here um, you know because you might be wondering like well where's the actual work that my child is to do well on each lesson it tells you you know what your child needs to do but then it'll ask like it may ask different things but most of the time it's just ask for an oral or written narration you know see narration 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 and then over here you know the older kids they read um, it let me see if I can get you an exam pulled up okay so I went back to the end of term one and I have you an exam pulled up so you can pause it and you can see um, you know how this history project or exam is laid out you know what the what the kids need to do so that would be the first one then the next lesson is another history project or exam and just to compare it like here on grades four through six for the exam it says tell all you remember about the Vikings well, on the very next lesson for grades four through six for the exam it says select a country on the map of Europe and tell about a king from the country who lived during the Middle Ages okay so you can do you can take that and you can use it how you want you can just have the kid quickly tell you verbally something they remember or you can have them write something they can remember or you can even have them pick out a king and then go and do some research use the encyclopedia use online sources whatever you choose and have the child actually do some deeper research skills and you know write a paper on that king there's there's different ways you can you know beef this up if you want and then for the geography you know for grades four through six here describe where the Cape of Good Hope is and tell in full how it came to have that name um, on grades 10 through 12 it says explain all the factors that were involved in making exploratory voyages citing specific illustrations or examples from your readings and then the Bible exam like for grades 7 through 12 it says summarize the book of James chapter by chapter and describe your findings for the word study and topical study in Galatians what did you study and what did you learn okay and then term 2 starts alright so I hope this video was helpful if you are interested or if you have had any interest in um, the Charlotte Mason curriculum for history um, well, I think that was about it. I was hoping to keep it quick, but it looks like I haven't. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. Bye. Hi. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add something real quick to the video you just watched for the history. Um, but I want to apologize in case my speech is off, you know, if I was to pronounce, if I do pronounce a word wrong I just came back from the dentist and so my this side of my mouth is very numb um, but I just wanted to get on here real quick and tell you you know kinda give you a warning <laughs> a heads up in case I do pronounce something wrong 
that is why I am having trouble saying certain words. Um, and I guess that's it. Okay, so I'll turn you around and add a little bit extra info to the video you just watched. All right, so what I wanted to add to this video is about the timeline. Um, in that history walkthrough I just showed you, um, I had mentioned, you know, that it did not, that the curriculum did not come with a timeline, but it did have the Book of Centuries. Uh, you know, it told you what figures to put. Um, now, Simply Charlotte Mason, they do sell a timeline. It is called Book of Centuries. You have to purchase that se separately if you're interested in that. However, I did not purchase it because um, we have a notebook style timeline that we have been doing for, I don't know, four years maybe. Anyhow, um, so, you know, I've already been working on this. So this is what we are using. Um, I made this up. But anyhow, I was just kind of wanting to clarify that you know, to let you know that they do offer one for sale. It is called the Book of Centuries, but it does not come with the curriculum. You would have to purchase it separately. Anyhow, so what I do, in case you're wondering or want to know more about this, um, this is something I just made up on my own. We call it People, Places, and Events in History. Um, I just printed it out, printed one out for each of my kids, and... Um, I had it spiral bound at Office Depot. I divided the these um, these labels here, these tabs. They are re repositionable. See, they come off and they just pop right back on. Very easy. I just labeled them with the divisions of history. We have ancient world, Middle Ages, Age of Discovery, and then present era. And I just made up these cardstock pages and. Um, what I done is I took address labels and I just typed up the uh, divisions that I wanted. So like for, you know, the oldest ancient history I use every thousand years. And then as you get more closer to present day where there's more recorded information, then I gradually went smaller. So there's like 50 years, you know, um, let's see, like that one's 100 years. I think present era is 20. Oh, okay. It's about 50 as well. Um... So that's what I done. So this is our timeline. And let me see. Let's see, there's the Middle Ages cover. But what we use is from Homeschool in the Woods Publishing. Um, they have History Through the Ages, and they have four. I think they may actually have more now, but let me see if I can flip this over. But on this on this back here it tells you they have creation to Christ um, then they have this one that I have right here resurrection to revolution and then America's history and then Neapolitan <laughs> Napoleon sorry got ice cream on the brain Napoleon to now alright um, but these are just cardstock trying to keep it focused here these are just cardstock um, you know you cut them out color them paste them however we don't we don't cut these I just make a copy of them and the kids I just copied them on regular printer paper in case you wonder what it looks like this is them not colored and I don't think the kids I think they quit coloring around creation time so this is kind of what they look like, you know, colored. I think they turned out all right on standard printer paper. I also printed them on fast draft, you know, to save some ink. So this is just a very quick print. I think they turned out just fine. Um, but if you're not familiar with Homeschool in the Woods with their history timeline figures, then I suggest you go and check them out. Um, I, I recommend them. They have them to where you can purchase the set like this. You know, you can um, purchase one time period at a time in paper form, or you can purchase um, all of them, like from the beginning to present day, um, all on a CD. That's last time I checked, that CD was about $75. Um, 
if I had it to do over again, I would buy the CD. And even though I have half of their set, I have two, I have the Creation and then I have this one. Even though I have half of their set, if I do come across it, you know, for around 60 bucks or so, I'm going to go ahead and buy the set, the CD, just because when I print these off, I may print off the whole sheet, but only need one figure. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, which I don't throw the old ones, the other ones that I don't need at the moment, I don't throw them away because I may need them later on. So I've got a folder that just has a whole bunch of loose odd and end pieces. And so I really have to take some time to find, you know, to go through them to see if I've already happened to print off the ones that I need now. I hope that made sense. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to clarify and show you what we do for our history timeline. Um, we, I personally prefer the notebook method. It doesn't take up any wall space. Um, it, it's just a, it's a nice, you know, keepsake. And this size here lasts them, I mean, I'm sure this will last them their entire school you know, homeschool career. <laughs> and um, I made, I think I put three pages for each date. I'm pretty sure that I put three pages for each date, front and back. So I gave plenty of time. I mean, plenty of space, you know. Okay, it looks like there's four. Five. <laughs> okay. Five pages. But anyhow, so that's that. And, uh, have a good day. <laughs>